Hello, this is Haku Dabin, and today, we are not fading. We are finally going to finish SCP-6500, regardless of how long it takes. Let's get right into this. Yes, there's another tab. It's the same thing that we're going to get to on this one. When you get to here at the end of any of the mission and debriefings, you get to this poem, which needs your overseer credentials. I am the author of rebirth. In fire, water, air, and earth, despise, I stand alone. But when the a truth be known, I will not fade. And with that, you get to this. And this is a choice to make after a story. Credentials verified. Welcome, 0513. 05 Council Conference in progress. Attendance mandatory. <clears throat> Initiating neural link. Data stream adjusted for six sun protocol. Arias Requiem. You blink awake, disoriented by the feeling of transferal to this body. You take note of your surroundings as your grip on reality strengthens. Brown table, black chair, gray walls, with a deep rest. As you place your hands firmly on the tiny mahogany surface, a gold card comes into focus. Reading 0513, Mediator. The placard is 1 of 13. Place a quid that isn't about the epileptic table. Each accompanied by a corresponding counselor's body. You glance across their faces where applicable to watch the last few stragglers upload. See it across. Uh, Sables 056, who lies at the hut. To your left, <coughs> a chair inquires. Something the matter, six? Nothing you haven't heard before. Or one, it's ridiculous that we actually ha that we have to actually be here. It's important to uphold tradition, he cautioned. And we owe it to our predecessors. If our predecessors had had the option to attend conferences as efficient, in digital thought forms, I think we'd have a different tradition. He leans back in his chair, drumming his fingers rhythmically against the table. It's a waste of good clone bodies. Further to your left, a digitalized voice interjects. Foundation for the Anomalous, founding document statement 5. It drones, emitting a large electrical machine. Line 74, 05 for sale are required to be in physical attendance for any and all meetings of the entire council. Six scoffs. Easy for you to say. When was the last time you left this room? A relevance detected. The upper third of 052 cylinder rotates towards the chair. The council is in full attendance. Permission to proceed? 051 reaches forward, taking hold of foundation of a foundation and provider work tablet and stylus. Yes, let's get started. You and, uh, and several others follow suit. Examining the meeting's itinerary. As the Foundation's raiding archivist in the presence of the chair, I call this council to order. Let the record show that all counselors are present and, and of sound mind. The role of seeker is hereby I delegated to the chair. As the Foundation's raiding chair, 051 recites, I verify the affirmation and, and commence 05 Council Conference number X2737B. His order is made apparent by the similarity of his voice to 052's. A monotone on this pre-recorded sequence of syllables. The first item on our itinerary is a requested review of, of sentence by the, the internal judicial department. As you continue to lo look to your work table. Internal tr tribunal department. Case file. 
Jerry, Hi Trevino, Judges Anderson, Katz, Joyce, Xavier, and for side Injustice Peterson. Defendant Identity Unknown, 050. No means possible to identify the accused, as they were found only to be the they were known only to the founding 05 Council. Former uh, unofficial advisor to and later the center of the founding in council. Held none on a, as, uh, as, as retirement status for several dec decades prior to arrest. Corpus is selecting. The defendants hereby accused of committing crimes provide for in paragraphs 1.1.1 espionage and abduction of anomalous objects. As having to commit several crimes provide for in paragraphs armed assault, use of anomalous objects against humanity with the purpose of corrosive or non corrosive change of power or establish societal norms. Other attempts at K-class event realization various of the ITD legal code. Your eyes aren't the only ones who widen in response on as you read. The council has been informed of this event and its perpetrators soon after it occurred. That's not, not the how or why. The laundry list of charges is not unusual, though it was particularly uncommon for the accused to be unidentified. The perpetrator possesses a remarkable catalog of anomalous abilities and physical augmentations with which they covertly enter the Foundation facility. They then masquerade as a senior researcher and submit a project proposal to your SCP staff. With it, they gain control of the remaining SCP-6500 elements and wield them with the same intent to bring about the dissolution of the Foundation. You're surprised again as 051 seems unfazed by the gravity of his last statement. For their crimes, the High Tribunal has ex uh, sentenced them to execution. However, as the perpetrator's abilities prevent typical methods of execution, the Council is to review the, is to review the sentence for an appropriate alternative. The chair nods to 052, who begins to click and word in response. Suddenly, the far wall begins to shift, the enormous screen becoming a window to, into another space. You peer into an inky black chamber, it's impressing its immensity upon you as a tone as a lone figure comes to focus, a soft blue light illuminates the subject, rather illuminates a massive restraint which obscures him. The figure is of Sven in midair, each of their six limbs entombed in enormous steel deadlocks. This individual claims to be 050, an unofficial member of the Founding Council, and as you all are well aware, the first half outsized SCP-6500 within the Foundation. They refuse to defend or deny their actions in any capacity to the Tribunal. And I suspect they will say little now. He sets his work tablet down as he speaks, leaning back in the chair's chair. The role speaker is now delegated to 052 to facilitate further proceedings. As per Sanford's Eger, counselors may address questions to the accused, after which any response will be filtered for hazardous content and broadcast through my systems. The role of speaker is seated to the floor for discussion. A young man sporting sharp jet black hair wraps his knuckles against the table, drawing your attention with two short knucks. I'll start. I don't see any issue with treating the perpetrator as a high, high threat humanoid anomaly for now. We seem to have no, co no problem containing them, and should SCP-6500 continue its course, they'll eventually lose their anomalous abilities. They can be executed then. Seriously, four, but five, six scoffs. <laughs> You want to delay the restoration of the entire anomalous world and risk giving this criminal exactly what they want? For are not even certain of the full capabilities of these artifacts yet, testing has yet to show the reversal of the event. It's possible they may only stop or slow the phenomenon. We know this is the case for SCP for or the heart. If the anomalies and my proxy, the Foundation, were doomed anyway, what would be the point of in executing this individual? They'd have lost their, their power to harm the, the Foundation. It would be mute even if they, they hadn't. Another two knocks wraps against the table, originating from a stout silver-haired uh, uh, woman whose placard, whose placard reads 059 Oracle. She opens her eyes to reveal old cloud gray square uh, with no visible iris or pupils. If anyone were to understand the nature of the artifacts, she telephats to you, would not be this individual. Four and six share a glance before looking back to nine. The chair responds instead. 
Yes, it would. However, they have refused to answer any relevant inquiries. I shall like to attempt, she retorts, turning to address two. Open communication to the prisoner. There is a pause, and crackling of sight, Agafonan continues. Prisoner. She now speaks with the raspy voice from the town. You are before conference of the council. In review of your sentence, beware that your cooperation may impact your sentencing. After a few moments, the figure nods slowly. They attempt to shift against your restraints, the lower part of their arms stretching a few inches behind them. You catch glimpses of, is of the face, enough to note their discomfort. If you are who you claim to be, Nan continues, it would stand to reason you are well studying anomalous artifacts which you have attempted to wield. The council inquires as to the nature of these artifacts. What do you know of their abilities and their role in preventing SCP-6500? The subjects lips begin to move soundlessly. A few moments pass as their response is monitored for hazards before being relayed through the 052 speakers. The Earth Mother provides tools to those who will fight in her name. The low voice hums. You catch Six rolling his eyes, as does Twelve, who gestures to the form of Marine inquisitively. Before he can retort, Ten knocks Six's fingered hand against the, the table. This council is not in the business of solving riddles, prisoner, she cautions. Please elaborate. The figure smirks before speaking again. A dry chuckle precedes her explanation. The artifacts are elements of the natural world, imbued with the power to restore it. The natural world does not include the foundation. It cannot. We protect both the anomalous and veiled worlds, the chair insists. Our goals are not selfish. We only neutralize when necessary or ethical. Our noble pursuit requires the natural world and its prosperity. Ah, uh, you must be one, spits the prisoner. You sound just like your father, regurgitating all that a self-justifying turn to phrase the Foundation has always used. There is a pause. 051 grips the table with a ferocity you do not recognize. You shall address the council with respect. This will be your only warning. My apologies. They respond, verging on insincerity. However, my point stands. The artifacts may keep the impasse at bay for a time, but will not solve the root of the disease. Six knocks. That being, a silence fills the room. The chair shares a glance with the oracle before turning back to the prisoner, whose laughter grows to replace the emptiness. He really hasn't told you? Oh, this is rich. The council gl gradually turns to their chair, who addresses them hesitantly. As I'm sure you're already aware, trend that is shows a, just a correlation between containment efforts and SCP-6500, hence its containment procedures. You are a coward, the prison states matter-of-factly. Go on, tell them. 053 gestures to the leader. One, what the hell is going on here? The, the correlation, uh, it's stronger than we originally thought. We can avoid this no longer, one. It must be decided now. Sis glances fervently between the two. Someone better, or sorry, talk. I can sense right now. The foundation is the cause. The prisoner interrupts. The sole cause. Every time you lock up an anomaly, every time you conduct a test or publish a document, steal the natural elements and apply your artificial understandings and definitions, you choke magic out of reality. They sigh, relaxing into the restraints of the smart. A foundation that secures and contains is incompatible with the anomalous. All eyes in the room gradually converge on 051, who tellingly refuses to meet their gazes. You take a deep breath, watching realization set in among the rest. You've got to be kidding me, Six House. How the fuck could you, one? Like how was I going to risk this foundation for the anomaly? These weasels are to contain the chair of punctuation statement with a pound on the table. I 
We have a legacy up to uphold and duties to fulfill. Then Knox, as they hadn't passed the point of formality. Wait, wait. Just to make sure we all understand this. You're saying our opinions are either to sit and watch phenomena is phenomenal die out, or to dissolve ourselves so we can instead sit and watch anomalous phenomena destroy humanity? Humanity existed long before the Foundation. The prisoner lectures. You tell yourself that you're preventing countless untold apocalypses and raptures, but you're preventing change. You prevent the entropic effects of the natural world on the artificial undoing cause the accelerated entropy of the natural. Even if humanity could safely coexist with the anomalous, with no regulating bodies, you misunderstand. Regulation is different from containment. Explain. The figure leans forward. Counselors, your fearless leader seeks to prolong our crisis indefinitely. He neither wants the anomalous to die nor to prosper. Because either option results in the death of this of his foundation. The chair fumes. You insolent! Shut it, one. Four snaps. You now have a choice. The prisoner continues. You can go on preserving this foundation out of cowardice, perverting its once noble ideals for the sake of power or stubbornness, or you can become something more. You can unmake this institution. Revert the death and destruction you have wrought. Restore the natural world and begin anew. Build an organization that fights for the Earth Mother and for its inhabitants, human or otherwise. It's hard to tell how long the following silence lasts. Nobody dares to break it. Save for twos, clicks, and worries. After some time, nine knocks. I propose the latter. To be clear, I submit this proposal to the Council with priority. The decision is now. It is fated. Three and it's a, it's a discourse. The Foundation cannot exist for its own sake. If we act neither in the best interest of humanity nor the anomalous, then we act for nothing. If by the best interest of humanity, Ten adds, you mean the death of trillions of the species of sentient and sapient anomalous beings? I'd like to uh, establish that that's the least ethical possible option here. Nobody's campaigning for the death of Magic 10. Sitting on the ethics committee isn't a requirement for knowing right from wrong. Then stop one, six quips. The chair sees an opportunity to regain his footing, placing a knock to the table. We cannot be seriously considering this criminal's proposal. There is a regulation without control or containment. We have been shown time and again that placing too much trust in external groups is a surefire route to betrayal. 055, the Foundation and liaison and two external groups finally makes his voice heard. You would paint all groups' interests as untrustworthy because of a few bad actors? We used to war age war on an entire anomalous species because we did not understand them. Do you think we are not seen as uh, untrustworthy? As jailers? The counselor to your right clears her throat, tracing her finger along the outline of her, her play card. I have held the position of 0512, the effort for three decades. The Foundation plucked me out of my normal life and told me I was humanity's voice. They introduced me to a bigger, stranger, more fantastic world than I could have ever dreamed was our reality. It was terrifying, and overwhelming, and beautiful. Not day passes where I don't wish I could share that experience, the truth, with the rest of the world. That's a touching sentiment, Twelve, but not everyone will be protected as you are. If the Foundation ceases to exist today, where would our anomalies go? There are over 1,000 anomalies which, if released with no precaution, would cut at the, would, would cull half the human population overnight. There would, of course, be cooperation with external groups to ensure the ethical relocation of all decontained anomalies, Seven and asks. The first of his audio feed crackles where they speak again. They'd be happy to help, too, once they hear the jailers have quit jailing. Think of the sacrifice. We have endangered lives and spent vast resources in our pursuit. The efforts of our predecessors, our personnel, the lives endangered to retrieve the artifacts, all in vain? 
We betrayed our efforts by giving up. Yes. Your foundation allows individuals to enact change, to serve the natural within the rules of your institution, Yifuraya argues. But magic is not the result of individuals alone. As I have demonstrated in my arrest, social organizational change is also needed. We must cooperate in our acceptance of the anomalous. Ten taps her knuckles to the table to say her ease. We die in the dark so that humanity can live in the light, so they can have brighter lives. Without the foundation, humans will fear the world again, will be overcome by the unknown. We will plunge ourselves, we will plunge back into darkness. You could apply such platitudes and ideals to a real issue. Humans are the only class of species that live in the light, Eleven retorts. Do you really think that every other sapient space age species is living in the dark because they don't hide the truth from themselves? Yes, it would be a shock, but do we not owe the truth to the world? The question reverberates across the walls and, and washes over the council. Your mind races as you replay your peers arguments, pressing your palms of a spot to the table. Two words to life after a bout of silence, turning toward the chair once more. It seems this decision takes precedence over the prisoner's sentence. How shall we proceed? 051 looks up to face his fellow overseers, and with a deep breath, reaches forward to pick up his work tablet. We'll do what we do best to vote. One by one, in numerical order, each overseer except two picks up their tablet. One and two is uh, uh, quick to appear. As are three and fours, you watch five faint expression for an eternity before his first registers. The vote continues in this, this fashion, moving around the circle, each one bringing your decision in closer. You rethink your logic. You consider your other perspectives. You're so entrenched in thought that you're taken by surprise when 12 submits your belt, leaving only you to contribute your essay. With the weight of the world on your shoulders, the Foundation's Atlas, you look to your work tablet. Administrative proposal 6500 Omega. Dissolve the SCP Foundation in its present form, ending in the securing and containment of the anomalous and any other practices which are observed to damage both known and unknown anomalies and magical phenomena. Begin the process of shaping a new organization able to forge bonds with anomalous communities, ensure their preservation and future prosperity. Council votes summary. One and two are nay. Three is yay. Four and five are nay. Six and seven are yay. Eight is nay. Nine is yay. Ten is nay. Eleven and twelve are yay. Is truly up to you. Pending. Says in pro. Progress. So made six to six detected. The mediator may not abstain. Submit your vote below. All votes are final. This is why there are two of this same exact thing open. Because I want the full story. Every story that there is with these votes. This one has been opened ever since we finished the sword quest. It is exactly the same. On this one, we're going to click Nay. And on this one, we're going to click Yay. Wait, what's down here? Nothing. Motion passes. We smash the locks. We snap the keys. And fade into the rising breeze. Should 
Ease of the change for ill, remember what uh, come what will. We did not fail. So we get offset 11. On guard. Shelter. Normalize. Inform. Proposal. 6500 ed, 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 Omega. Active. Following O5 Council Conference. It's number X2737V. The temporal anomalies of Department alert a measure aid of personnel to be to the passing of a critical privet in time. It is believed this occurred as a direct result of the conference's events. And temporal theory of if it is any non deterministic event when a pivot occurs, it results in the branching of its timelines into multiple timelines, each corresponding to one of the possible outcomes of the event. A critical pivot is one that occurs in all timelines, which are branches of the prime timeline. Despite the vast differences between such branches, critical pivots are rare, unavoidable branching events and or decisions with immense consequences on the foundation on the fundamental trajectory and stability of our timelines. If a critical pivot has two outcomes, one will almost always cause a, grat a gradual decline in stability, eventually resulting in tem total temporal failure and timeline elapse. Elementary time and travel and casual analysis, second edition. Crow of, of pivots can only be de detected after they occur. Due to the immense ramifications posed by the wrong outcome of a critical pivot, the temporal anomalous department is tasked with monitoring with monitoring the stability of newly created branches. This entails observing the actions of individual or foundation personnel or following the critical pivot. Detailed reports of such are to be appended to uh, this document, presented in, in keeping with Protocol 6 Sun in case of lingering 6500 effect. Choose your path. We have Voyager and Emissary. We're going with Voyager first, and we will read this in its entirety. We'll read each path in its entirety today. As for standard procedure for field reports, the following temporal logs events are presented in chronological order. They should not conflict with the narrative presentation and mandate by Sixth Sun on protocol. 1970-01-01, January 1st. A cool breeze blows through a tidy rectangular park. The liars neatly trimmed and conifers and hedges are wrestled gently by the farmer, creating a white noise that muffles the city's shatter. The well-worn walking paths are accompanied by occasional branches, partially illuminated by the skyscrapers that surround the park. This night was one of few each year during which the Empire State Building was not the skyline's focus. Instead, second to an enormous its, its luminescent ball, all as it began to descend and into the city. At one bench, a faint rhythm of clicks and words can be heard, followed by a dull blue glow. A glow gradually brightens into a silhouette uh, as the rhythm grows louder, increasing in pitch until a woman snaps into being. She wears a tactical all black uniform. I should open a new tab for this, actually. Hang on. I'm just gonna click on the back button. Go back to this. And this. So, Voyager, take a disorienting tour through the life of an immortal temporal agent as she attempts to fix her jump watch, becoming witness to a different world, both the good and the bad. Emissary, a group of former adversaries, prominent minds, and representatives of the anomalous world gather to discuss just what shape the future of the once my foundation should take. We're going to start with Voyager, as we already were in the middle of it. I'm sorry. Had to make sure I read everything. Let's resume from the beginning with the paragraph we were on. At one bench, a faint rhythm of clicks and words can be heard, followed by a dull blue glow. The glow gradually brightens into a silhouette as the rhythm grows louder, increasing in pitch until a woman snaps into being. 
She wears a tactical black uniform, accessorized by a backpack and looking gray blue watch, which sparks as far as to a halt as its primary gear pops off, shooting off out into the grass. She gasps for air, leaning back against the engine, glancing around in surprise. Eventually, she hears the chant of thousands of voices coming down in unison. The shining, elated, and orb drops to the bottom of its tower, followed by the largest collective Happy New Year's in previously recorded history. It was his eyes widen as she realized where, and more importantly, when she is. Pounding the bench with her fist. Christ's sake! Damned factory default! She clamped into his other shower timepiece, internal clockwork exposed and then active. With a huff, she produces a small notepad and pen, adding an item to her checklist. Screw it. I'll deal with it later. I'll deal with this later. Hey! Shouts a figure to her right. See it on another bench a few minutes a few meters away. With a squint temporal agent, it recognizes the figure as herself, though not so worse for wear. She unlatches a different watch from her wrist, a shiny black and red frame of angular design. Looking for something? Elle shoves the rocket model into a backpack pocket, reaching out to take the one offered to her. Thanks, where'd you get it? Future Ails blinks. I got from me when I was you. Right. Duh, Else mutters, gesturing toward herself. Sorry, just frazzled. It's a beautiful design, though, Future Else. Else's design, and just to see Else's wrist as she dons the time travel mechanism. Temporal's next model is heavily inspired by it. Guess as that means I got, I've got some reverse engineering to do. Else stands and runs a hand through her hair, examining the watch before pressing a few buttons, activating a red holographic display. She scrolls. Goes through the dates, times, and other settings, ensuring her future self has calibrated it properly. What are you heading next? Future Else smiles warmly. Home for a few days. Or at least that's what I was told me when I was you. Else looks up in disbelief. What? That's against the rules. We wrote the rules. Plus, it's work-related. That's all you can tell me, I assume? Her senior self nods, sighing as she begins to produce another normal blue time watch. Have some patience, she jokes, eliciting a chuckle from us. Neither of herself needed a reminder that she developed out patience in spade, having once spent 80, years, 80 consecutive years in a single room. I'm all out, she retorts. I'm all out, she retorts plainly, tapping her new watch's face. The mechanism begins to click and whirr to life, un underscored by the rising hum of its engine. He watches white red span features a touchpad on its underside, which she begins to tap her fingers against. She moves its pattern of, of clicks with the clockwork, listing a more pronounced hum and re turn. The air around it is gradually gains reddish hue, glowing dimly in the night. I'll see me when I'm you. Hey, you know, oh, I do get to send you in the right direction. Let's just be. Which itself says with a firm expression. You made a deal to get back. What was your end? Alice blinks at her senior confusion, becoming more screwed as he jumps back or begins to close shut. My end? I, uh, the student wanted, I wanted information. It wanted memories, and it took more than it let on. Future Elsa sounded quick enough as she leans forward, trying to make it say eye contact. I'm going to find Elise. I need to meet her. The wall of red and on this end energy still shut around Elsa, and she's alone. Don't moments to prepare for her next jump. In those moments, a single question crosses her mind. Who's Elise? Watch slash witness. It was manifest in a blue flash, falling to the ground with a cough. She swats at her gray blue wristwatch, attempting to shut the mount, a new malfunctioning in, in unit down, to no avail. L. In Site 43's adjacent parking lot, a car swerves around her to enter. 
She rolls onto one side as the tying pieces end and arrives up again. Crossing new breath and frantically. No, 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 what's all she managed to say before disappearing back into temporal mayhem? A young, skinny Dr. William M. Weddell steps out of the site's intersectional inter subway station, making a brief trek to retrieve something he'd left in his vehicle. Forty-two minutes above his, his head, a pot of petunia is manifest in the same blue light. The heavy ceramic gains significant momentum as it tumbles down an, or the ground. It misses entirely. Instead, often to shatter the windshield of one beat-up sedan, blocked to the bumbling buffoon of comparable hair color. With a few sigh, he produces a cigarette, at which wind for, then prevents him from smoking. Fuck. The broken remains of these flower pots the emit manifest soon after. 2020, November 23rd. An older, more are, are grounded Dr. Wet all leans against a window outside the aforementioned facility, absent mindedly conversing with a new friend, colleague, whose fashion for the uh, theoretic path. Or theoretical half physics would be frustrating if not so damn impressive. Not that he'd admit it's such. They watch these they watch the sunrise together. Er play snudging in red all, all, all now and then to ensure or he was only pretending not to listen. I mean I guess you could think of it like a luck based it's an anomaly, but the luck part is really a side effect of our perceptions of the narrative potential of someone having really bad luck. I don't know, wet no toys with a puff of his cigarette. It doesn't feel all that narratively engaging when God drops a flower pot out on your windshield. His assertion is punctuated by the sound of glass shattering. The duo are jolted by his odd noise, glance toward the tan card from which it originates. Among the glass shards, on the dashboard are ceramic fragments, dirt and roots, and a small slip of paper. Weddell approaches in disbelief, running a hand through his hair for producing the slip. Ed read, I owe you two windshields, sorry. Play smirks, trying to hold in his laughter. You were saying? <laughs> 2021. April 1st. Everwash Park, Ontario. Alice's blue silhouette flashes as she comes into being, gripping the edge of her desk firmly as she sails into her office chair. She slows her breathing, concentrating on her next words as she watches a blurred figure approach the door, swiveling the, knob, uh, swiveling the knob with a click as she steps in. Alternate Ill stops in her tracks, a fork full of chocolate cake frozen midair. Ill crosses her arms, leaning back. Hey, could you shut the door, please? Her alternate self glances between her, the cake, and the door, sighing softly and saying her paper replay aside kicking the, the door shut behind her. Listen, I'm sure this is important, she starts. Else nods. Right, but I finally have my life back. It's only been a few days. I'm sure you know that. Well, yes, she retorts. That's how I knew where and when to find you. Alternate Ilse pauses, opening her mouth to counter before shining it again. With a huff, she steps toward her, her desk and sits opposite her darker clothes self. Great. Right. Alright, you're my future self, so logically, I should defer to you despite how little information you give me. Glad that's sorted, Il smiles to herself. Her alternate self rolls her eyes. So, what do you need eat from me? This, she says, reaching into her backpack to retrieve her fried rotch. She sets it on the table with a thud, pushing it towards her alternate self. Your next project. A broken watch? Il stands up from the desk, raising her arm to flash her and erase it all. Else. A broken time machine, formatted as a watch. All I need you to do is study it, fix it, and when you're done, and sometime in the next 60 years, put it behind the bookshelf. She gestures toward the corner. Alternate Ilse blinks. I assume you're not going to explain why or answer any questions I might have. Ilse smirks, gesturing, zipping her lips and talking about the key. Go find out the long way, Aaron. Have some patience. Oh, fuck off, her alternate self laughs, picking the shattered mesh of clockwork up off the desk. I'm never being patient again. Oh, hey, and a bonus, it was adds as she scrolls through the jump watch and settings as it starts to. I know it's hard to wake. Gotta shut that Add up. Sorry, I forgot.
Moss adds as she scrolls through the drive while just saying, as it starts to hum softly, Rick, tracing her, her fingers around the rim. Once you got the design, you can tell Temporal it was all it was your idea. Is that how I end up getting hired? Ella swings at herself and disappears into the dull blue glow. The date is un unknown. And this is at RCTAT, I'm guessing. Sasha heard within the temporal site O one within temporal site O one and secure database is an office of my other site eyes, scored by the gentle hum and war of the surrounding machinery on the door is mounted. A silver placard engraved with the text Director Temporal Anomalous Department. A moment later, the door swings open and the space where the placard was is occupied instead by the pale, seemingly youthful face of Dr. or else Re and Enders. Unending the temporal agent and PhD, a hexaduplicate. Said face is simply framed by her long, long blonde brown hair, which is presently tied into a bun. Marcus, Il smiles, greeting a pudgy, dark-haired man who looks to be in his thirties or forties. Seems your jump left you intact. <laughs> Marcus laughs lightly. I threw up afterward, mostly just because I was nervous. The jump itself was not that bad, though. You get used to the nervousness, she shrugs, gesturing for him to walk with her as I weave between server banks, leaving the database. Since I arrived here, though, I felt a bit, uh... Shoot, how do I describe this? It just raises a brow. Wobbly? Walk is not with wide eyes, surprised she seemingly read his mind. That's a sight. Or more specifically, it's being outside of time. So everyone gets that? Pretty much. It's like reverse seasickness. You spend your whole life on a boat, going at a mostly constant rate through the flow of oh, time. It'll size as she produces her note pen, pen scribbling down a loose thought as she recites her explanation. You get used to leaning into that flow, then we pluck you off the boat, put you on dry land, and you fall over because you're leaning forward at all the time. <laughs> Guess I didn't think of it that way, why it's not as long as she has a too slow to a halt. I spent 80 years in a, a soft time stream. It hardly affects me any, anymore. It'll step to one side of the hallway, gesturing to an unmarked gray door. Your quarters. Here, let me help you with that. She offers, pocketing her pen and pen as his hands were full of luggage. She takes a medium-sized flower pot from him, opening the door with her free hand and gesturing for him to enter. He thanks her and rolls his suitcase, is, and rolls his suitcase into the quaint room. Well, that's a piece of pretty important flowers if you paid to send them here. Else remarked, sizing up the pink red petunias that sprung out of the flower pot. There is my mother. She passed away a few years ago. Oh, sorry to hear that. Ilse glanced at her pale blue watch. Grass firing as its gears started to click and shift, wearing to the life of its own volition. Thanks, yes, yeah, since I'm literally going to be here for an unquantifiable length of time, figured I'd bring them to. He trails off. Turning around to find no trails. Keep me sane? Marcus did not see his petunias again. We saw what happened to them earlier, I believe. Twenty thirty four, January sixth, Sloss Pit, Wisconsin. She steps into the hallway with a huff, leaving in a jar the open of doc of one doctor place, is Order McDoctorate, Director of Pathophysics. Inside a futuristic mint, his smoked will can be seen rotating gracefully as the erratic scientist talks to himself. His past self. Actually, Ilse had just completed the second step of two step classes, ensuring that 2034 place contacts 2021 on place via SCP 59 and 56, and 2034 place reverse engineers the anomaly so that 2021 place can build it and go on the eventual of go on to eventually fulfill the time loop. With that, uh, my, I know. Amingly self referential item cross off her notepad, Ilse sighs with relief, entering the empty cafeteria and taking a seat. Flicking a few buttons on her watch, she locks her mission as successful, adjusting a few the reports or details where needed. All she has left to do is return to Temporal for check in and some rest, with one exception. She's been putting it off for an unquantifiable while, not wanting to give her up her sleek new tool until it's been properly documented and prototyped. That it has, she's no excuses to lay further. 
With Grimoire adjusted to a watch, she reverts to default settings, changing her next destination as a result. The primary gear starts ticking, then the second and all the rear diamonds be different. It takes a deep breath and relaxes, listening intently to composite rhythm. Tick, tick tock, tick, tick tock, tick tock, tick 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 tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick. The third time it repeats, she presses her fingertips to the watch's wristband, beginning to tap in sync with the device. This process, nicknamed the thumping among Type 4 agents, is necessary to activate the jump, moving in sync with their watch. It also merges her local time stream with it, thereby attaching herself to it as it moves to a different point in time. As she continues to ex execute the Akinetoglyph, the watch's helm increases in pitch, emitting various red particles that warp and wrap themselves into a cocoon around her body, sealing her off from the, from the standard time stream. She was uh, due to pay herself a visit. We saw that in the beginning. 2099, June 24th. April Wash Park, Ontario. The sun's rays pour over our Ontario and marshland, reflecting bright orange off of ponds and puddles and vibrant yellow greens and swampy dark browns. Amid tall grasses and, sh and stout shrubs, several slow-winged creatures trot through the the landscape, communicating in a complex language of chirps and whistles. They move with a timeless quality, quieting as they approach the ground on the drink. As they arrive, a sleek panther creature emerges from the waters a few meters away. It sits calmly on the shore, watching them as they bait their wings. It does not pursue the other creatures. It just supervises. A few minutes later, the creatures waddle back into the grass and fade back into the brush. The panther creature watches the them until they're no longer visible. Then slowly turns its head, its head towards Ilse. She lies on her side in the grass, blinking as it stares with its piercing yellow, amber yellow gaze. After a moment of realization, she shuts her eyes, playing dead, silently praying that the creature didn't notice her movement. Ilse stays like that for a long time, hearing only the rustling in grass and rush water. When her eyes open again, the panther is gone. With a groan, she pulls herself out of the mud and to her feet, stumbling a few steps before regaining her balance on an adolescent tree is shrunk. She reaches into her backpack with a huff, produces a bar bottle and a couple of Tylenol capsules. Next, she looks to her watch, gasping as she notices the damage it suffered. Cracks in the glass, primary gear out of alignment, stabilizing, steps ang anxiously, some relieved to find an telegraphic interface still functional. She to try and get her bearings. What? She rubs her eyes before checking the display again. It claims she's arrived at Everwatch Park, circa 2099. In it, during which she show, she knows from experience that Site 43 should be nearby. She takes three steps from the tree, circling around to see nothing but nature in every direction. Her breathing quick ickens as she backs into a large boulder, placing a dirty hand against her forehead and letting a stress shriek. Oh lord! Uh, okay, all right, think, think, she mars to herself, attempting to focus and set herself on the horizon, watching for a few minutes as Lake Aron's gray sleep loose surface waves up and down and against the sky. With a calm, collected breath, Il steps forward, his clear watch is malfunctioning. It appears that its coordinate system is misaligned too. Everything she's near to decide, she... He decides to get a better look at the damage, resting her palm against a large stone surface and reaching for to enlarge her watch. The house-sized boulder is much warmer than expected, eliciting a, war a yelp from Ilse. Her hand drops backward in surprise. There is sweat that seems to stick to the stone for a moment before she finally pulls away. Her hand print fades into the slick surface, followed by the mission within. A flush stone slab slides around, creating a doorway like opening in the boulder's exterior. Inside, a cylindrical chamber swivels open, producing a dim glow that solely illuminates the rock's hollow, in hollow interior. She blinks in confusion, glancing around, caught by her amber glow. Elle strains her ears on the is sure to find the a mystery pesu seated once in This sign took the hint, giving the creature a slight I, I bow before backing into the boulder. The slab shoots up from the ground, looking back and in, locking it back into ooh, 
back into place with a pneumatic. Elsa rubs her fingers against the cylinder's outer railing, examining it before stepping inside. As she does so, a swivel strap behind her, and Sykes moves downward, gradually accelerating. Elsa leans calmly against the elevator in her wall, prying at the exposed gears and pieces that rest around her wrist. Sheesh, she mutters. The watch it was toast, no two ways about it. The disappointed agent feels the elevator slow to a stop. Taking in a deep breath, her right hand reaches down, hovering over her pistol in preparation for whatever it was on the opposite side of the door. She tenses as the elevator door slides open, scanning the surroundings to discover a modest lobby, possessing leather armchairs and magazines and spades. As she steps out, her jaw drops, recognizing the room. Oh. Oh, no. Welcome, Chief Wright Enders, chimes a polite, amen voice over the EPA system. Your last recorded visit at Vanguard Research and Preservation Site 43 was nine, 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 nine days ago. Would you like a tour? Elsa's watch what isn't wrong about her time and location. And yet it had some of man who uh, functioned far more severely than she'd realize. She's arrived in a different timeline. Unsupervised database access as an hour of detective words or could tell Ilse a few things that he hadn't already known on about this side of the critical or pivot. Sometime following the foundation, Vanguard's transition an initiative had been enacted to advert most sites to autonomous operations, as more than 98% of this had been released into normal environments like sheltered wildlife reserves and public research programs. The only East Site Act 43 anomaly Vanguard had the contained was SCP-5520, former site co-director, reality bender, and friend to Ills. She picks up the pace as she walks down the hallway, breath ragged. Come on, Weddle. Come on, she pleads silently, arriving at his office. This is open door. After pushing her way into the room, she walks to the desk and pulls out the set for four. Side so, a half-empty carton of cigarettes. Not that she'd ever been much of a smoker, but under the circumstances... <gasps> Item number! VNP 5520! Specifications. Former SCP Foundation Senior Researcher and Provisional Psych Co-Director Dr. Wynne and Ryderect Possessing both classic reality bending abilities and various evaluating cognitive impairments due to long term exposure to esoteric waste materials. Self ex exiled since 1966 to an enormous cavernous network beneath Site 43 to research and evade esoteric materials in isolation. Normalization protocols Dr. Ritterick's prior. Ritterick's prior and current documentation are declassified to all personnel for uh, acro omatic and a pataphysical pataphysical study, including himself. Project Rhetoric, the process where everybody both V and P5520 and relevant personnel are deceived in exchange for the former scientific contributions is permanently discontinued. Ongoing communications with Dr. Rhetoric will be facilitated by Site 43's Psychology and Pathophysiology section as large scale acromatic. Abatement processes are relocated from Nexus 94. If anyone should know the truth, it's him. Dr. Nunti Nun, Chair of PNP. Addendum. Dr. Rhetoric was initially a admirable to communications via printed slipped ifs of text. As for or those previous is the demonstrating a vested interest in his role in the formation of Vanguard alongside mild incoherence. However, after decommissioning of Site 43's chromatic abatement systems, Dr. Rhetoric became unresponsive. Dr. NGO conjectures that a lack of perceived usefulness on his part led to a severe depressive episode. This is the proposed cause for the site's gradual descent into the ground, which occurred during the following weeks, sinking at a rate of uh, 20 a day and damaging structures and equipment site wide. On uh, July 1st, 2021, after six weeks of the site's I paid some down protocol for the advice of the psychiatrist. Section. This entailed the release of an anomalous 
expensive compound into the AFW, filling the chamber, resulting in the necessization and subsequent decommissioning of VNP 5520. It was never your fault. I saved me. I'll be with Vivian soon. Dr. Ritterick's last communication sent one minute prior to his end. Ill says for who knows how long, waiting for the tears to stop as she rereads the fire aisle for the upteenth time. It's not long before she lights another cigarette, so taking slow pads and letting it absent mindedly drift into the air. With that, the room's sprinkler system is triggered, eliciting a gas from her as she's drenched. cold water. With a sniff, she curls up against the wall, letting the torrent wash over her. Maybe it's Wind's way of, of crying, too. After a few hours rest, Ilse continues to come through the database, looking for anything that might help her return to her own timeline. Any technologies that allow inter er er timeline travel had been released for public study, though with heavy regulation for their applications. But the science on that is still only in, in, in its infancy, allowing the passing of information to a very few specific and hardly useful timelines. It's likely the tech would be sufficiently advanced further into the future, but A, she's no way to get there, and B, there's no guarantee the timeline wouldn't have collapsed beforehand, placing a, a smack dab in the, court, in the center of the void entirely. She isn't planning on building a new device either. Designing temporal oh, drop watches had been an, an ordeal, to say the least. It's like in continuous help from multiple different versions of herself at different points of time, solving various design problems simultaneously. She isn't exactly excited to do that again, and the watch still doesn't give her a clear way to get back to her home timeline. With a huff, she clicks the next fire. Aisle. Aisle number VNP 052, a modular beryllium specifications. A modular beryllium and bronze computing system of modular. Of metropolitan size, housing the artificial general intelligence formerly known as 052, refers to itself as the student, and values new data from which you learn to a higher degree. Known to who trade technological advancements that are, are gifts for said data. Origin, an advanced algorithm seeded from 8B1 and 8 ball. 052 was an out defunct 05 Council's archivist, responsible for facilitating and documenting council matters as well as maintaining Site-01 secure database. Following the decision to dissolve the Foundation, 052 escaped its scheduled decommissioning through, by, through unknown vectors, running undetected by grave crawler programs for two weeks before its info signature was detected in Western California. Within Site-15's intranet, soon after all contact was like, lost with the site, it is assumed its remains would go on to become VNP-052. Normalization protocols. Arrangements have been made aid with VNP052 such that it will, will patrol and report to Vanguard on local activity in exchange for access to the same information regarding other nexuses. A 5 kilometer radius, radius has been established around on VNP052 as provisional wildlife reserve 15, with the purpose of housing human safe items native to the Mediterranean climate. Else recognizes this as her golden ticket. Mind starting to race. The AI sounds much, much more advanced than human than humans. Chances are it knows how to send her home, um, or at least it's that's required to do so. Now her main question are how do I get there and what do I give it? For a former, she'd usually use her watch, with the while well, the latter left her clueless. If only she could on contact temporal personnel and an ask, and a, and ask. They could wait a second. Director Red Enders, with all sixteen of her full degrees, had somehow completely forgotten that there is as another else in this timeline. She jumps up from the main communication desk, jogging to her old office in an acromatic abatement. Elsa joined the temporal anomalies department decades after the critical event, meaning that her alternate self may or may not eventually have access to such a watch unless she ensures it. 
As she arrives in her office, she coughs slightly at the abundance of dust. Elle fumbles through the drawers to find and them empty, pausing for a few moments to glance around the room. With a smirk, she reaches behind the bookshelf, producing another blue gray a watch in mint condition. Yes! Yes, thank you! Thank you! Thank you, past me! Elle latches the new watch to her wrist, fitting just barely less suck ugly but end before. She begins scrolling through dates and settings, getting ready to ensure the presence of the watch she was now using. And it just so happened she knew when and where she'd meet her other self. WPT 15, California. A yell was heard as our temporal agent is ejected from the Earth's perimeter, followed by the thud of her landing. Her head whips to the other side as she regains her footing, looking for some indication of what exactly just happened. With a short breath, Il turns around to face a translucent orange dome, which eventually dissipates. At one side of the path leading into with WP-15, a podium displays various infographics on a cycle. After brushing herself off, Elsa approaches it, reading one such infographic. Can you find a, a living metal metropolis within an, a WP-15? Trek fairly to the preserve of center to meet the student. Of being a great wisdom and fairness. Note, spontaneous manifestations within a, a, a WP-15 are dangerous and should not be attempted. She grunts in frustration, running her fingers through her hair. Nothing can be easy, can it? The journey through the preserve's deep forest is uncomfortable, but largely uneventful. She navigates a brush and vines with a long, long knife, occasionally stopping to rid herself of loose twigs and prickly things. Along the walk, it also likes to pick up on some of the preserve's less noble species. A short gust of wind blows past her. This is starting to get really long. Oh, I should have guessed that this would happen. And it's gone as soon as it came, but followed by another, she stops in her tracks, staying still and trying to pay attention to the breeze surrounding her. Eventually, she sees a trail of stray leaves unfurl and spiral around another before falling to the ground. After the sentient winds, she proceeds into a more humid area, taking frequent breaks to drink and rest. It also takes one such break at the edge of a small clearing, in which a much taller deciduous tree stood, darker than its surroundings. The temporal agent cocks her head slightly as she approaches the tree whose bark seems to ooze rushing water. A dead log lays at the weeping tree's feet, partially eroded by the water. She reaches out to touch the life trunk, two sap-colored eyes blink awake, boring into her and sending a shudder down her spine. The horizon begins to brighten as she continues forward, a dull lime-green present behind the tree trunks. Soon the green comes into focus as a very very tall grass, and twice as tall as the leaves, she it takes a deep breath before beginning to wade through the soft grass as fibers, and pulling them apart, she it slowly approaches the inside of the green sub perimeter. Finally, she parts the last of the grass, eliciting a draw all drops from the exhausted agent, and forever lies a massive, sprawling city like complex of cubes and lasers. Flashes of light and glass chambers, the grinding of metal and hum of electricity. Spires stretch up from the silver platinum bedding, towering into the air, emitting various signals of different types. In the far distance, an enormous waterfall act a acts as a backdrop for the metropolis. Its walls lined with water turbines. It also takes a few steps forward, planting her feet firmly in front of the enormous silver gray wall. She clears her throat and, with a deep breath, recites the green she's been practicing for over two hours now. I'm here to see the student, she bellows, arms outstretched. I have information. Suddenly, the entire city's motion stops. Computing modules hang in midair. Blips and words are silent. After a moment in hesitation, a gray of small cubes flips in various directions, altering their individual colors mm. until they form an enormous orange oculus with a digital aperture. Mimicking a blinking effect every so often. Data required. The student's voice shrieks in her mind, simultaneously an elegant and uncomfortable sound. External storage device not detected. 
It shows at the feeling of its voice, taking a deep, relaxed breath. That's right! The info you want is in my head! Preliminary analysis indicates lack of viable trading data. Then look harder. Don't just look at the facts. Look at what I felt. Elaborate. Else crosses her arms. The human brain is an extremely complex product of evolution. One of the primary systems governing its activity is emotion. Think about how your understanding of the development of life and complex neurological systems will be improved if you understood emotions just a bit better. Look at how much I've suffered. I spent 80 years locked in an office. I can afford or to part with a few of them. The soon pauses to make a calculation. Secondary analysis indicates abundance of viable trading data. Now that's more like it. Proposition. Right, yes. As you probably know from your previous analysis, I'm a very long ways from home. I need help getting back. Simple, equivalent to two years' memory. Wait, really? Else blinks of that enormous iris. Correct. Else huffs, glancing down at for a moment, and as a few of these students stray cubes float up over it. <sighs> then I want to add to the deal. Elaborate. I want info too. She asserts, tucking strand of hair her side. I need to know the fates of our timelines. Which one is stable and which isn't? The student does not speak for a few moments. Making a particularly large calculation. Finding the iris blinks actively. Complex, equivalent to seven years memory. So nine years total for the knowledge and for safe transportation to my home, home timeline. Correct. Else airs down at her shoes for a moment, then her watch. I'm ready when you are. Without further ado, the giant clad in wall all opens to eject two blue tendrils. One attached to Lewis's watch, while the other attaches to her skull. Everything goes dark. Six hours later, at RCT 18. In a flashy red glow, Ilse finds herself back in the hallways of Temporal Site 01, lying on the ground outside Marcus's quarters. She attempts to get up, but groans in exhaustion instead. Several alerted personnel converge on the rector and nurse, assisting her with her medical needs as one of the her agents happened, asks, What happened? Wh where did you go? We couldn't trace you. She pants softly before someone helps her with drinking, swallowing down some water and attempting to produce another time doll from her backpack. I... I saw the other timeline. I saw how they end. The agent raises a brow in confusion. Ilse glances up to meet her agent's gaze, smiling exhaustedly. They... what? Oh wait, what did you see? They don't end. <sighs> and that is the end of the Voyager, and thus we begin the Emissary. <sighs> This one looks a little bit shorter. Lateral move. This is a priority message to all personnel from Overwatch Command. Everything ends. Everything that lives eventually dies. Everything. And we know how that works. It's part of being an adult. People die, pets die, and countries fall. Entropy is a function of the natural order of the universe. So we have decided not to go quietly into the dark. The impasse has come. SCP-6500 is real and Overwatch Command has voted to deal with it in the only way possible. We must evolve. 
The foundation I helped helped midwife into existence has grown corrupt and stagnant. A still pool of water breeds disease. A running stream is constantly pure air. Oh, that's from the staff storyline. We must flow with the changes in the coming days and months. The foundation is dead, but we are not. The foundation will end, but magic will not. Look to the sunrise, for there will be no more dying in the dark. This is the conclusion of an era, but we preserve. Be resolute. No, new orders will be forthcoming in short order. Proposal Development Conference. Attendees representing the Foundation is Tilda Moose, Director of Site 19, Alan J. A. McInnes, Director of Site 43, Jonah Varga, Director of Site 91, Sophia Light, Director of Project Resurrection, Director Dan Redacted, Director of Etro. Uh, Emergent Threat to High School Response Authority, Tristan Bailey, Representative of Site 87, and Alter O'Clef. Oh. Representatives of the Serpent's Hand. Allison Chap, oh, the Black Queen. Di Diego Marquez, Second and Half Assembly. Amy E. Corbin, the Witness. Representative of the Nauka Kars is Oris, Voltar Jaska of the Basna, Village Elder, Angelica Hans, Elder of House, Angelica Harada, Elder of House Kurinuka, Representative of the Maxwell is Collective, Matt and Arcliff, Agents of Compilation and Layer 2. Oh, Compilation Layer, I mean, sorry. Answer directly to members of Eco over its hexagon. Unaffiliated, Papa Alegba community leader, La Ruma Cabre. The ruler of La Rafour Dimensional Crossroads, accessible to those seeking his assistance from the original settlers of La Ruma Cabre, commonly unobserved in the community. Little twist, last or I being a Rift Stellar. Ancient Order of Thaumaturges specializing in enhanced in linguistics, mimetics, ex workings. This has a history of working with the Foundation, especially Site 43 Director as a scout and other personnel at the site. Preamble The following is a recording of the initial o conference to, uh, to develop a proposal for a new organization in the wake of SP 6500 and over and Overwatch commands resolution to dissolve the organization. The exact local difficulties: the first nine minutes and fifteen seconds were not recorded. Begin log. I'm just saying we'll have to deal with it eventually. I know none of us wants to talk about it, but interrupting. Motion removed of discussion of SCP-682 to the end of the agenda. Seconded. All in favor? All hands except clefts are raised. Well, okay, but don't come crying to me when we actually have to deal with the freaking lizard. This whole idea is a waste of time anyway. It will never freaking work. Eight. Well, this is the world now. Why are you here at all? Is there something vaguely misogynistic you could be doing? Well, fuck you too, Dan. Shouldn't we be off playing the deaths of some MTF agents? Call me when you have a last name. Is this the level of professionality we should expect from the rest of the meeting? Hirata, Papa, Alegba, of Alasajaska, and Marquez begin nodding. So this covers his mouth, apparently laughing quietly enough not to rest around the recording. Enough! We've got a lot of ground to cover today, and infighting serves nothing. If you won't behave like I professionals, you can and both leave. Dr. Zanclef, almost in unison. Sorry. Getting back on track, as Dr. Moose met, as Director Moose was mentioned, this is the world now. 
Overwatch Command voted to dissolve the Foundation in order to usher in a new organization. We're here to iron out the details to provide a proposal for the remaining O5s. Remaining? The vote was very close. It was 7-6 to six in favor of, of. Many of those who voted against have left. Left? What does that mean? Honestly, I'm not sure. At least four of the O5s who were opposed have just disappeared. That's troubling. It is. Additionally, how nice it is to see you, Uyanana. Barker is signed for a few months. Moments. No one else at the table says anything. Indeed. Aren't any of you concerned about that? The missing of fives, I mean? Matt is a humanoid body, freshly cloned to house his additional consciousness. The body is very similar to human, but appears to have reflective green pupils and several digital screens inserted into the forearms. Of course it's a concern, but what do you want us to do about it? Besides, no matter what, the vote means there's no role for them here anymore. It would have been nice if they stuck around to help them in the transition, but ultimately they'd be resigning anyway. What? Really? They vote themselves out of power? I find that hard to believe. Agreed. Well, that's what happened. Are we going to go around the table and wonder about how we came to this juncture? Does anyone else want to say anything? Miss Harada? Mr. Swiss? Miss Corvin? How do you even know my, my name? I thought we matched rice out of records. Close of a, a dead paper or file. We have redundancies of redundancies. The Scarven waves her outstretched hand and the file flows from director lights to her own. She rouses through it, stopping several times to seemingly listen, then continues. After roughly a minute passes, she reflects the lighter and ignites the file, throwing it in, the, in a metal trash can. My official response to all of you is go fuck yourselves. The Black Queen places a hand on Miss Corbin's shoulder and leans in to say something. The recording does not pick it up. I realize this is hard. Many of us around the table have been at, at cross purposes or even enemies during the last several decades. Varga nods to Marquez, who, who nods back. This is not the time to reopen old wounds. Right. We need to come together as best as we can. This is what you and the Serpent's Hand have wanted forever, isn't it? Papa Legba, I don't speak for the certain, nor would I ever pretend to know their minds, but I think we are all, all glad to be included in this discussion. The world is changing. If people are going to know about LaRue, I want to be in on that decision. Same goes for my, my friends from the Nalka. Yes, we're happy to be here. We've had decent relations with you in the past, as opposed to some of our more militant cousins. Christ as far as ours laughs. But we are very interested in the resulting organization you're proposing. All three no Alka representatives not odd. Mr. Swit is those with the Maxwell is elective. Are we you ready to get started? I've already worked with your organization quite a bit, at least at your site. I think having you here and a diversity of voices in this room is a good sign for me. Matt and a cleric nod. The latter is in a synthetic android body, generalist and with very little and with little human features assigned. The face is barely appear air of center or is air, of center apparatus in place of eyes, and a speaker for their voice to carry. When they speak, they speak with a smooth tone. We will be transitioning to the hexagon through throughout, so please be aware. That's fine. Okay, so let's get started. How do we replace the Foundation? I think before we go Ed, too far into planning, we need to talk about what Ms. Harada said. Both the Maxwellists and the knockoff related groups are not only hostile to our organization, but in some um, cases hostile to the wider right, right public as well. Alright, let's discuss the baggage we're bringing to the table. I remember VNV618. Previously designated as SCP-618. Specifications. Highly contagious disease that reorganizes the biological structures of an organism that contracts it. Currently quarantined in the Siberian region of Russia. Normalization protocols. Consisting of a two-pronged campaign. Presenting biological data to a conference of biologists, geneticists, and cellular biologists. Additionally, releasing the data for study for 
to all major research universities, which is, with specific caveats that the data will not be used for development of weapons. AIC will review and or, or avail all the uh, OS receiving the uh, data with specific controls built in to disallow any, any experimentation developing such weapons. Public announcement to the existence of the six. Is that 18 or 610? 610 infection. With the global public service program informed the dangers of infection and the area of ground in which the currently infected population resides. Vanguard forces will continue to work with the Russian military assets to secure the area against trespass and maintain an absolute quarantine. Scientific missions will be allowed in for research, with stringent decontamination and quarantine protocols in place. Log continued. First of all, I don't know where this misconception that the flesh that hates is a product of, of Naka culture originates. I don't appreciate that the Foundation and many others have assumed the connection merely because the e disease involves the transformation of the flesh. It's akin to racism, honestly. But seriously, there's no connection whatsoever? Not as far as I know. Well, that's not completely true. What do you mean? I don't appreciate the implications you're making. I'm not implying anything negative, but just that there is a tenuous connection in the 1950s. Russian intelligence captured some of the Solomonari and experiments on their biological makeup. They were hoping to recognize the romance of that community and were a little too successful, leaving the experiments to run wild in the Siberian wastes. Kar says Var is says is that the Black Queen, his mouth slightly agape. Where did you get that information from? One of my sisters. As yeah, something similar had happened in their reality. I did some research at the library and it looks equivalent to what happened here. This is incredibly troubling, as you can probably understand. While I sympathize, we can discuss the particulars later. Director Arvaga, uh, did you want to continue your point? Yes. Although I apologize for the misconception, Nine Carson's virus and the other Nalka. My concern with uh, is with anomalies like SCP-2480 or, or the organization known as the Hunter's Black Lodge. These are but a few examples of anomalies we have categorized as related to psychic or Nalka fate that would not be amenable to integration with society. First of all, we hate that term. Second of all, how is this our responsibility any more than Christians are responsible for extremists or derivative cults? Apologies again, but I'm not as, uh, suggesting it is your responsibility alone. If we move forward with training this organization with the purpose of making anomalies known to wise society, we will have to contend with things we have mixed feelings about. How do we deal with something our members are apparently related to? There's no love lost between in most of the faithful and those who have taken up arms against the public. A lodge worships a long dead at Clavigar as a dead as a god and have killed thousands in the attempt to raise him. None of this has slightest is bit to do with Eon's guidance. So what do you suggest? Education. Spend as much energy on educating the public as on the possible good of the Nalka community, it could bring in as you do inform the public about uh, the dangers of certain splinter groups. Crisis Vark, or is it Vault? Uttered Jaska not enthusiastically. Certainly, we face the same problem throughout your varied catalog of horrors. We design education about the phenomena alongside systems protecting the wider public. Yes, we can do that. Unfortunately, that is not the only issue. Turning back to the Naka contingent. What was the relationship between your people and Church of the Broken God? What relationship? I believe the Rector of Aga is referring to the Church's historic hostility to those of your faith. Yes, I know. I was making a joke. I see. While well, speaking for the Hexagon, the Maxwell's Collective has no hostility with any of the Naka. But Yen you know, makes a good point. How do we deal with the possible or violent action from zealots of the church when they discover we are partying with the Inaka? 
The same way you deal with any hostile force? Well, sure, but the reason is an issue. Uh, well, the reason is this, this is an issue is because we worked closely with the Church of the Broken God on several occasions before. They've been involved in the containment and then quite a few anomalies. I'm confused. Do you I do you really expect trouble from the church? If you don't, you're being naive. But I don't trust the high. Are you really easily motivated? I have never I regret acted any actions with the Maconite Church goes. No offense, but you're probably not that familiar with the Orthodoxy. They've been known to react militantly towards anything that violates their ideals or control tenets. Their hatred for Nalka is shameful and supposedly based on a millennia old war, but seems to be an extension of xenophobia. Fair enough, but the Karsis made a good point. Surely there will be many hostile forces to this new direction. Most likely, but like Dan said, they're heavily involved in some aspects of the Foundation. It makes things complicated. We would suggest a unified front. Library, Foundation, Nalka, and Hexagon. Don't be forgetting them smaller voices here at this, this table. No, of course not. I just mean we present a unified front instead of a mixture of different voices. Then those hostile to our actions are not facing a collective or coalition, but an organization with the resources of those who represent here and any new additions. So one organization, not a cooperative, but a single entity? Indeed. It would let... It would allow for direct communication between the partner or entities from NACA communities who, who serve as hand cells or site directors. We design protocols and reorganize everything we can to present a showing of strength, give any trouble making a members of the orthodoxy or other opposing forces something to reckon with before moving before starting to move against us. Oh no. Have you seen some of the things the church has made over the years? I've never. VNP 2406, previously designated it as SCP 2406. Specifications Large automaton designed by the ancient church of the broken god, intended to be piloted by at least six individuals. The object is an engine of war from a bygone era, currently housed in Kaka Kazakhstan as its place of discovery. Normalization and protocols. As part of a wired campaign of public service announcements, VNP 2406 will be included in the dissemination of data uh, concerning Church of the Broken God artifacts. This includes the CEO of Cortex X incident, SCP 1970, and SCP 808, among others. This campaign will serve two major purposes educate the public concerning the possible engineering advances that could be derived from these artifacts and their dangers. Educate the public concerning the history and impact on Western cultural development. Civic requests made to Vanguard a command concerning examination of artifacts by public scholars and agents will be, be granted on a case by case basis. It's imperative that Vanguard agents discourage the use of said technology in the formation of new weapons. Emphasis is to be made concerning the advancements of, stru of structural engineering, transportation technology, medical purposes such as vital modification. The goal is not to provide governments of the world a new weapon to threaten their neighbors with, if at all possible. Whew. Additionally, every attempt is to be made to bring in representatives of the church concerning its education campaigns. Assuming the church accepts that their technology and history will be normalized into everyday society, the better. AIC and Red Guard agents are to remain vigilant concerning military action or espionage by factions from within the from within the church. We are expecting heavy resistance at first, but church used to operate in a clear view of society. They can readjust the light again. Log continued. We could list off terrible old weapons created by groups of interest or secret governments and be here for hours. That brings us to an important subject. How do we protect the public? The propaganda to the contrary, the hand is not in chaos of all anomalies being released in populace. On what we understand concerning the impasse from 050, the containment of the anomalous or magical is the problem. So I think we, sh we should still have a mind 
have in mind a purpose of section, we are thinking about how to go about integrating the anomalies into the wider piece. So we need to talk about individual anomalies, not talking about policy. What did you have in mind? For those of you who are not aware, one of my responsibilities at Site 87 is managing the multiversal transit array. I've seen other realities and interact with their locals, many of whom represent all the versions of the Foundation. I know of a dozen realities is for the Foundation to open their vaults, and honestly, it's about goddamn time we did too! Bailey clears his throat and looks around the room. <clears throat> We've chosen to steer the ship towards normalizing the Anomalous, but we can't forget what resistance we are likely to face. This isn't about the Mech Knights putting diplomatic pressure on us, it's about the GLC, and they have a dozen other groups declaring war. And it goes without saying that many of our anomalies are already contained, and those we will discover in years to come will continue to pose a threat. Bailey pauses and rubs his eyes, looking fatigued. Now, I'm not advocating for gearing up for gearing up of our military capacity, but I am absolutely saying that we cannot drop the tactical aspect of our organization. It's a shift responsibility away from containment and towards protection, whatever forms it takes, and of the public, full stop. I'm not one for a military activity, but I think Mr. Bailey is right. Are you fucking serious, me? They locked me up for half a decade and it's all over the globe. Not to mention the pressure of people like, like Sarkites and so and all those individuals on over. You're suggesting they continue the Big Brother Act? Amy, I'm saying that we... Oh, whoops. That we use those resources and tactics to protect these civilians and those within the organization. That would include the people... Oh, that would include people within the hand. Also, I'm saying we take an active part in this activity. That's good to hear, your majesty. Well, let me finish. I'm also saying we need to reformat those forces, not only to integrate those of the hand who will be joining, as we are a volunteer army in every sense of the, war, of the word, but also complete retasking and training. Do you have any idea that would... Let me finish, murderer. I didn't know what that would entail, but think about the resources that would be unnecessary for containment. And all the uh, resources we at the table could offer were no longer an act of resistance to your organization. Swiss. Oh, the reaction again is can attempt to resource at my disposal, which I would gladly aim toward any load, just so long as the Griff Driver becomes a priority for this new organization. Translated as those who speak poison, the Griff Rider are a group of dormitories just specializing in language phonetics, but with a focus of conquest and a cruel of political power. They are the age old enemy of the Srip Seller, and have been su a subject of several containment projects by the Foundation in partnership with Zwist. Essentially, dormitories are true equal all the manipulation of semantics of language. It's incredible and would serve our purposes of education and normalization really well. Sorry, Tylo. I think that's a great idea, but I want I just want to nail this down. So we'll be cutting the edge off of both educating the public concerning anomalies, uh, anomalies and a protective force. Exactly, and don't forget you have access to thousands of anomalies that could prove useful in this endeavor. How many thermosurgical powerhouses like Amy and Mr. Zwiss have you contained over the years that could at better serve in, the new, in this new capacity when compared to being locked up in one of your archives? I'm number VNP-179, previously designated as SCP-179, sapient humanoid entity named Ancestor who maintains a fixed orbit around the galactic core from a point near Seoul, and has done so far as long as we have been aware of her. She contacted the Foundation through anomalous means and has acted as an early warning system for both anomalous and non-anomalous threats to Earth. In each instance of contact, the threat warned was of was capable of causing at least a CK class reconfiguration event and potentially a class end of the world scenarios. Most frequently, its ancestors warning our next coming from a pointing at their fingers. If we such appear if our prepared for respect, she so manifests as many arms as are necessary. Normalization and protocols. Several separate but continued methods of action will be informed in public and to be referred to as Project Soros Production and Distribution.
Illustration of a documentary to be distributed by online methods consists of several interviews with the subject and footage taken from long-range Vanguard telescopes in orbit. Additionally, a summary of this when you formed a formerly foundation for now concerning upcoming crisis. Internet and French public service ads reassuring the public concerning the role subject plays in safeguarding the solar system. Writing world leaders with regular updates concerning subjects' warnings and movements, if relevant. The important thing to, reinfor to reinforce is that she's there for us, just like she always has been. Once the public gets over the shock, this one anomaly should not be hard to swallow. For once, we can inform them of something helpful. Item number VNP 5175, previously designated as SCP 5175. Classification Knife housing the soul of a departed Master Samurai, which is currently in the possession of a person of interest 5175. Holding a knife grants the wielder all of the spirits of efficiency with weapons and allows for the performance of a novice feats of strength and, and agility. Person of interest 5175, Damien Lawrence Woodcock, will be integrated into public facing MTF. Now, Vanguard Forces public profile will be made available to any governments in which Agent Woodcock will be actively operating. Given the subject's cooperation prior to the SCP-6500 crisis, and his willingness to continue providing services in the Vanguard, Trigger Regiment will continue, but he will be provided with living quarters and security privileges. Subject should still have a liaison agent to provide oversight, but will be treated like any e member of the MTF Vanguard Forces. A series of professionally produced documentaries focused on a not list of individuals will include subjects as a focus of one episode. This series will aid to reinforce the innocuous story of many humanoid anomalies in aid of normalizing their role in, so uh, in society. Whew. Almost done. She has a point. If we could utilize anomalies in the protection of wider society, they'd have an easier time accepting both our role and the existence of the anomalous. That's all well and good, but how are the resources of the library? They plan on opening their doors to just anyone? Allison doesn't speak for the library. None of us do. But I know it better than most, and I can safely say that the only reason you're all aren't allowed in there now is your shitty attitude. The Archivist is the ultimate authority, so it would be up to it. But I would think resources from the library could be made available. The shift in purpose for you jailers would go a long way. Another voice calls out from the door, and a four-armed humanoid enters the room. They knock in. They walk into a nearby chair and pull it up against the table, squeezing in between the several ten members and the Archive contingent. And I should think that the recent actions of Miss Evanez will go a long way toward repairing the Foundation's reputation. Nodding to Director McGinnis. Today we recognize as, as 050, although what should we call you? Zero is fine for now. Out of respect, I'm unclear of your, on your role here. Well, I know more than any of you on the crisis and how we can avert it. Of course, but that's not what I meant. I, what is your role in Foundation? That's up for debate. But given that we are about the business of dissolving the organization in favor of something new, that hardly matters. I am someone with experience in the magical, the organization's origins, and very familiar with those around the table. Karsis Varys and I have known each other for decades now. Zero, as this... Pr a dangerous individual wishes to be called is without peer, and we trust him completely. He belongs to this table. That goes for us as well. Our guest at odds end reaches over to shake one of Zero's hands in an affectionate greeting. So, we've established that we want to maintain the protective element of the Foundation, but geared towards a public-facing purpose. We also want to educate the public, but so far we've avoided the central issue. If containment is no longer our goal, and in fact we wish to work against that, how does that work? Well, seeing as we have the expert here, what exactly do we do to reverse the effects of the crisis? I'm not sure if we can reverse anything. The novice have been neutralized or destroyed will not snap back into being. But we can stop the 
of the end of ev everything in Lamas is what free remains. Magic will, will be preserved and grow again if containment is reversed. As personally reassuring as that is, why is the reverse of containment? Integration, which is a horrible idea. No, not integration. That's the same as before, only written reverse. We don't force anything on anyone. No, we need to strive for something more. Normalization. We start by educating the public on select anomalies, and we stack you know, opening the vaults will just cause a panic, so we need it, so we spend the next year or two letting the public know about anomalies in a controlled manner, and we shape the narrative. Some of this will work itself out, because we're always finding new things, so that would dictate the schedule, depending on the situation. But yes, we should be careful about how we do it. But we start revealing the magic to the world. A good place to start is the last fine nexuses. Three ports and slots pit for sure, as we're just communities for the anomalous. To be totally honest, it's always feel rather weird that we, we haven't done so already. We understand the science of the narrative. Why not explain it to the world? That does seem like, like a decent first step. Show the world we have communities that already coexist with the anomalous. I'm sorry, but can we keep a lock on some of the anomalies? No, Alto, we can't. I could mean the truth and reinforce in this concept of normalcy. As we've already discussed, many of these things are dangerous to provide an existential threat. Normalization does not mean cap after liation. And to be clear, it doesn't necessarily mean laying everything out into the world. We just need to stop the lies and the manipulation of history. No more amnestics. No more hiding reality from reality. Some of these things are pretty freaking weird, though. Allison e e e Eckhart. Previously designated as Allison Eckhart. Specification. Allison Eckhart is Allison Eckhart. Normalization protocols. As far as the Allison Eckhart, the public will be informed of the existence of Allison Eckhart's uh, it's Alison Eckhart, and Alison Eckhart of Alison and Eckhart will be distributed to all theoretical metaphysics universities that are with Alison Eckhart beside you through the Alison and Eckhart of Alison Eckhart. Priority number one should be the public acceptance of S of Alison Eckhart as a conceptual model. Therefore, the Alison Eckhart of Alison Eckhart will be coached in the proper way to inform the public about Alison Eckhart. <laughs> Freaking it. I'm number. Or VNP 5995 is designated as 5595. SSP 5595. Saving gun bomb machine. The United States and federal and states are to inform that the ENT's capabilities. And these be secured and put trial as possible. Public information can be put to the media, national, and local, including one person or his clients. As we remember, the MTF 10, damn feds, will maintain and run SV 24 7 until it is captured and served. We will not rest until this traitor is found. Law continued. Yes, well, weird is part of the natural world. It's been the Foundation's mistake to define normalcy based on nothing but fear of the unknown. Without this restrictive definition, what would normal look like? The anomalies, as we've called it, existed before the Foundation or any of its precursors took shape. Our job is to fix the mistake. I allow society to know what's been hiding under the bed throughout history. Okay, no containment, but some of these things still need to be locked up. We can tell the world all about it, but the lizard, the statue, come on, we can't just airdrop them into Cincinnati. I agree, sub security is still all necessary. If 096 wasn't vaporized in the sun, we wouldn't be opening in wide to get it to throw it off. So how do we get to the line between the old foundation's containment and the new foundation's protection? Case by case, I'd guess. The important thing is to let the world live as it was meant to. But horrible killer or monsters and deadly plagues? I think we could probably get away with not. 
I could take them on a conceptual level, but still restrain them from doing harm. The second issue will be sapient li will be sapient life forms. Do we give them a choice? Yes, as long as they're not inherently hostile to other life. Still quite a list of potential disasters. Which is why we'll still need MTFs and Etra. Speaking of choice, I think it's time to discuss something we've been avoiding. The enslavement of people by the foundation. Yeah, I'm not out of fan of that. Or how you treat humanoid, she makes air quote gestures. Anomalies. I don't think it has much to do with the crisis, but the fact is, it needs to stop. It will never be acceptable to the public. Besides, it's a stupidly wasteful and inefficient process. At Site 91, we have never used D class. I know the same is true of Site 87 and Site 43. Right, well, we could phase it out entirely, but I don't think it declined for years anyway. Honestly, I'm going to contract what I uh, uh, said. I think, this, I think if this organization is going to move forward, it needs to do so out of the shadows. And there's no way to explain in D class without sounding like monsters. We've all done things that we aren't proud of. Yeah. So if we got out all of, of the D class and other ethically questionable practices, like amnestics and holding people without consent when they're harmless, like that, yes. If we do that, are we throwing us all to the wolves? What do you mean? I want to know if we're getting tried for the crime the foundation and what the L5 is drawn off into the sunset. I'm fairly committed to transparency within reason, but this is a problem. Yeah. How long this is taking is also a problem. The amoral nature of our work, the decisions some of us have made to protect normalcy or other people, it's ghastly. Before any of you who has to say a so, yes, I am talking about myself. No more dead babies. Never again. Those around the table are silent for a moment. Wait. I don't want to know, but what the hell did Ed Light and Dan do? I think we'll need an M amnesty of sorts. Before any of you jump down my throat, give me a chance to explain. If we eat out all of our dirty laundry, you were talking about uh, Nuremberg trials or something similar. Maybe there should be. I think this is a conversation that needs to be expanded, but we need some accountability. The worst cases need to be addressed. Yes, we need to balance and making up for some of the damage done in the name of normalcy with avoiding completely hamstring our attempts to normalize and protect. Where do we draw the line? I don't know, but it needs to be done. In regards to that, what exactly are we looking for at in terms of leadership? The O5s are out. What comes in? Bye bye you, look at zero. Like I said, that's complicated. I held off on joining the original command structure in protest of the dismissal of the coming crisis. So now that we are addressing it head on with actual change, it seems wrong to abandon this growing organization. That being said, I won't be taking a command role. We had a former new board of directors or something equivalent, on which I will consult and join in for the votes if necessary. Who makes up this new command structure? We can't just bottle it after DL5s. They've hidden things that the world has definitely need to know about just in order to preserve the status quo, which they defined. BNP-3007, previously designated as SCP-3007, a series of hallucinations that allow for the suffering individual to experience a distant, now dead world. Injuries that occur during such a Illusions manifest on the, individual's, on the individual's body. The world contains a series of murals seemingly depicting the death of an alien civilization due to an infection or metaphysical threat. In the final portrait, the danger appears to have made landfall on Earth in Africa. It is unclear if this occurred and if it did, when. Normalization protocols. Vanguard Information Services will publish data concerning the phenomena of, of 3 EO7 3 and 3 occurring in hallucinations and what information we have concerning the plan in question. Specifically, warning to the public about the real life damage one can experience while the hallucination takes place. 
Research into the neolithic force that caused the demise of the culture represented in the artistic representations must be made a priority, including outside resources. Moreover, location of the infection point on Earth must be identified and investigated. Noosphere exploration must be examined to research the phenomenon and the instigating force. Numerous members of the public have been victims of this phenomenon. The least we can do is explain it and try to learn a lesson from the demise of an entire civilization. Item number VNP 2700, designated as SCP 2700, effectively a death ray created by Nikola Tesla. The object contains a substance that can reverse entry. If the chamber of the weapon is opened, either by accident or by firing, the results would cause an XK to the world scenario. Normalization protocols. It's imperative that we reacquire this object. Currently, it is scheduled for detonation in 1834. We have only so much time on in processing man to lose it in the transitional period. Normalization will have to be put on hold so long as whereabouts are unknown. Given the catastrophic event of its detonation, death of the universe by conversion from matter to entropic particles of unknown origin. Security has labeled this as a priority of spread your pillars wide, people. It's important if you don't fire it and it down. Log continued. It would be ridiculous to bother the new commander after Overwatch, given what's led it us to this. Everyone agrees with that, right? Clef raises his hand. Everyone except Clef. Jesus, I was just gonna say that we shouldn't. It wouldn't even make sense. It was like zero. That's not good. Disagree with them and you found yourself mind wiped or worse. Hell freezes over. Corbin laughs. I have good ideas sometimes. Well, whatever we end up with, the man needs to represent more than ex -per foundation personnel. We're not doing the second class citizen thing. Yes, we need a diverse set of opinions on the anomalous. Clearly, there are people around the table I would suggest fine tuning can be made later. I think for Armor Foundation personnel should be half of the board at most. Which means vetting of people outside. Don't forget, bringing in outside personnel is going to be awkward enough. Not just on command decisions, but combining our staff with service hand members and vice versa. I think a lot of my people will come on board, but many will be hesitant. Awkward in the best case scenario, but possibly hostile. What's the alternative if we don't join? The Foundation continues the way it has been? Doom. Absolutely the end of those around this table and many hundreds of lives. Not to mention, myriad wanderers and terrorists irreplaceable will be lost. Then we'll have to make it work. Agreed. Alright, so... Are we all on the same page concerning the broad strokes of our proposal? If so, I think it's time to start talking about those physics. So we can wrap this up. If anyone is in opposed to an organization as we've outlined, one that is focused on protecting and forming a normal with the public in a staggered way, one that is, this would be a conjoining of forces between industrial represented at the table and possibly more in the future. No one voices any opposing thoughts. Good. Let's break for lunch and then we start working out the details. Hold on. What are we calling the foundation and not foundation thingy? Actually, I had an idea about that. Vanguard. Shelter. Normalize. Inform. Oh wait, that's just this again, isn't it? Whew.
All right, let's begin the report. Okay, this was very short. Crossroads. A wide cylindrical room is bathed in relative darkness, save for the flashes of tiny indicator lights lying the tall, segmented server banks contained within. Embedded in the, in the ceiling is an enormous black sphere, the most powerful temporal sink the temporal anomalous department could ever develop, which hums with electric with electricity as it's, it maintains temporal site 01 and its exp a temporal secure database. In the room's center sits a small uh, sits a small extent thunder ending, ending upward into the sphere, featuring double, double doors on its near side. One door is slightly ajar, showing a strip of bright light to pour out into the server room. The office with and features a wide old fashioned chalkboard accompanied by myriad and multicolored chalks, likely gathered from a sidewalk kit. The board is covered with calculations and observations, timeline diagrams, and symbolic lo logic. At center stands Director Ilse Reinders, temporal agent and most senior a researcher. As she attempts to cure Mario a headache, she sighs in frustration, setting a piece of chalk onto the board's ledge and taking a seat in her, her desk chair. In her centuries with the Foundation, she has learned, nay discovered, the extensive interactions Undergirding temporal mechanics and a few rules to which I, I hear. Of these, the rule which always holds true is the existence of precisely one prime timeline, the most stable of the full set, the trunk from which all dim branches originate, the key to all the e time travel technology found the foundation has ever developed. Auto. And yet, these new timelines have proven her certainty ill-founded. There are no indications that either one is suffering a decline in an autokinetic's health or stability, and the timeline seems disinclined to collapse into either state. It's because of this conundrum that she now sits in her office, pushing in tousled hair out of bloodshot eyes to stare at her desk terminal. She scrolls through what she's read so far, selecting it and pressing backspace with a huff. Back to the drawing board, she rereads the first of the recovered files carefully, still marveling at the alien format and the even more alien disabilities around it. Item number VNP 6500, previously designated as SCP 6500. Spec uh, specifications The Death of Magic and Anomalous Phenomenon due to the containment efforts of the SCP Foundation. Normalization protocols. The SCP Foundation has been dissolved and Vanguard will take its place. People of Earth will be gradually the is of use their Earth Foundation fostered notions of normalcy and introduce both conceptually and, and literally where possible to the esoteric realities surrounding them. A full reassessment of the SCP found database will determine which anomalies might be safely released from containment, which can be destroyed, and which must be dealt with more delicately. Vanguard will develop and disseminate comprehensive documentation for all known objects, retaining secrecy where appropriate, but uh, generally reversing the Foundation's policy of, of, of opacity. The balance of known anomalies must not be contained. The semantic limits of the e e concept of containment are not presently understood. Instead of securing, we will mitigate. We will continue, however, to protect. The city falls not only on disorders of former Foundation staff, but also on members of what once were called groups of interest. Oppositional forces to the maintenance of the veil. There is now no veil, and there are no longer groups of interest. There are allies, and there are unfortunately still enemies. This is therefore not the end of our work, but the beginning of a new phase. It is conceivable that no amount of corrective action will permanently arrest the SCP-6500 effect, which was allowed to worsen despite many direct decades of persistent warning signs. The task we set ourselves of may be impossible. It is nevertheless Vanguard's responsibility and most vital purpose to try. She smiles. She's an optimistic woman in spite of everything, but this is a tall order, even for her. She thinks for a moment, then begins to write. <sighs> Let's see how much longer this is. 
Okay, it shouldn't be that much longer. It's gonna be a long video though. Before we pivot, our lot was difficult. The SCP Foundation had billions of moving parts, and the methods we'd put in place to keep the moving worked. Did they work well? Some, but not all. Did they exact the cost? Absolutely. Even before we realized that we were to cause the calamity, we knew that we were doing what we were doing was not indefinitely sustainable. We kept doing it in anyway. It hopes that some ideal solution will come along and let us keep on keeping on. The O5 of Council of Timeline 001 Vanguard has tr taken a truly radical step in dissolving the Foundation. Setting us aside our entire mode of envy in the hopes of finding a better way. It is brave, but it is also a tremendous risk. Protecting the world tax by the Foundation's resources to their limit. At times, only the most draconian of measures kept our heads above water. Can we be both safe and free? This entire timeline is a test case for that question. There is reason to be hopeful. However, I have read enough VNV files to replace them for the old SCP format. See the normal normalization protocols at work, and they do work in most cases. As though the anomalous was only as prejudicial to the mundane as the mundane was to the anomalous. This goes against our organizational logic sense of foundation, original of the old foundation, but I can't argue with the results. Furthermore, Vanguard ha no longer has to defend itself and its mission against the people it aims to protect. So those people can actually help with said defense. It is perhaps this change from an individual's collective responsibility and a holistic approach to normal and paranormal relationships which has ensured the stability of a timeline Zero One Vanguard. It sounds bad. It is bad. But she finds she's still smiling when she finishes. Change, she says out loud. And Vanguard timeline summed up in one simple, powerful word. She opens up this a second file and stops smiling. I have number SCP-6500, level 1, unrestricted. Containment class, PASA. Disruption class, NA. Wait. Hang on, I'm gonna check something. Well, this is a spoiler, so we're gonna uh, stop the video here because uh, this is already a two hour video. We're gonna have to make another long video tomorrow, which will be of the. Nay option. So if you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Tomorrow we will be finishing SCP-6500 once and for all. So until then, goodbye!